We'll start in Ukraine, where Defense Minister Anita Anin made a surprise visit to Kyiv and met with her Ukrainian counterpart, Oleksiy Reznikov. The minister announced Canada would be sending 200 armored vehicles to help Ukraine defend itself against Russia. The minister's announcement, though, comes as Ukraine is reeling from tragedy. A helicopter crashed this morning in a suburb of Kyiv, killing at least 14 people. The helicopter was carrying several high-profile Ukrainian officials, including the country's internal affairs minister, Denis Monastrysky. Earlier, I spoke to Ukraine's ambassador to Canada, Yulia Kovalev. Hi, ambassador. Good to see you again. Thank you very much for making the time. Thank you, Ashi. Uh, I, look, I want to ask you, of course, about the announcement in the visit today. But first, it's my understanding that, that with that helicopter crash, you're friends with, you were friends with, very good friends with the Interior Minister. What can you tell me about him? And, and I'm very sorry for your loss. First of all, it's a huge loss for us, for Ukraine, as today in the morning on the helicopter crash, Ukrainian Minister of Interior Defense, his deputy, who was former uh, working in, uh, in our foreign service, um, the state secretary, all the crew, and unfortunately also one child died because of the uh, helicopter crash. The helicopter just crashed on the kindergarten near Kiev, and it's a huge loss for us because the minister and his team were the f uh, leading the first responders and throughout the war, they were the first after the military people who were coming into the liberated uh, areas. They were working and leading the work on all of the demining. And just on, on Friday, I was talking to him and we exchanged a lot uh, with him about the future plans on and the support. He was very grateful for the support that Canada was providing us, especially for years on the reform of the petrol police. Uh, on the demining efforts. Um, he was telling me the story how Canadian uh, bomb uh, suits that helps the people who, is, uh, who are doing the demining effort just save the life of two of his uh, team workers on the field. And of course, it's a huge tragedy and uh, loss for us. And this, is, this week is really hard. As, uh, as Russian missile strike Dnipro mm -hmm. now we have like a 45 people died, including five children, the whole families. And some of the children now left the orphans without the parents. So it's a really hard week for us. It's a hard reminder of the human cost of what's been going on now for nearly a year. Yeah. Um, I know there's an investigation going on. Do you have any sense of what happened with that crash? Is Ukraine able to rule out that it was an attack? So we are just the Ukrainian government made the decision a few hours after the crash to start the investigation. And as soon as we will have the result of this, the investigation, we will report on them. And meanwhile, there are a lot of people who are, have been injured. They are in hospitals and we all providing them all necessary support. There are the children. So the helicopter crashed just over the kindergarten. The, the kids were just playing there. And of course, we are praying for all of them to, to become much better in the coming days. So we don't know. Ukraine does not no. know at this point. Okay. At this point, we, we just want to have the result of this investigation. OK. If I could turn to the announcement today, uh, our defense minister met with her counterpart in Ukraine, and she was in Kyiv to do so, and then announced uh, 200 Canadian-made Senator armored personal carriers part of kind of $500 million that was announced a while ago, actually. Uh, the other part was uh, the last thing I spoke to you about, um, the, the missile defense system. Do you have any sense uh, of the timing of when all of that will arrive? And I ask because I heard your president today address the World Economic Forum and stress that the delivery, the quick delivery of all of this weaponry is the most important thing right now. Um, yes, and you know, all of this that is said uh, occasion that happened this week, it just reminds us how valuable the life of people is and how this support can help us to stop the war by liberating the territories. And as President uh, Zelensky said today, uh, addressing the World Economic Forum, it took uh, Putin a minute to start the invasion and it took a days to start supporting Ukraine, and now the timing is very essential. And of course, like these armored carriers, is um, is the uh, the 
machine, the vehicles that are provided, uh, they are produced here in Canada. I was visiting the facility, they expanded it, they created new jobs uh, for the people uh, to be able to produce them. They are producing them rather quickly, so we do hope it. we are counting on months, but 200 vehicles, but like few months to be delivered. Um, and that is important because it will help us to protect the life of the soldiers on the front line. This is the carrier that can safely um, bring the people to the battlefield and take those wounded back. And that helps just to uh, save the life of the people. And, and my understanding is, look, Ukraine made a lot of gains in the last half of 2022, but the past month, month and a half has been very difficult and things have almost been, you know, it, Russia has been very aggressive. And I know that Ukraine wants to begin taking back a lot of territory and, and the emphasis is also on tanks. And in particular, there's a meeting happening in Germany at the end of this week to decide, because Germany has this veto over this leopard tank that Ukraine really yeah. needs. Um, many European countries uh, can send it, even Canada, but, but Germany can veto it. Do you think Germany will change their position? We have been talks for already for the months with Germany asking them of providing us the, the Leopard tanks. Some time ago there was uh, the uh, statement from the Germany and the signals that they are ready to provide us these tanks if some other partners from uh, among the NATO members will be ready to provide the tanks. Now we have it. So uh, last week, um, uh, Prime Minister of UK and the Minister of Defense announced that they are providing Ukraine with the NATO standard UK produced tanks. So the door is open and now uh, we are looking forward for Germany to make a right decision. And the right decision is to stop potential Russian escalation. And this is helping us to be able to succeed, to kick off Russians from our territory. And that is the way to stop this war. Are you disappointed that it's taking this long even for Germany to give it the go ahead? Of course, if this all you look, if we uh, see now how the evaluation of the approach towards military support to Ukraine is going, it's many things that were out of total veto a few months ago. Now they have been provided to Ukraine, including the big air defense system yeah. like Patriots, including the tanks. And, you know, um, it just... We, lose, we are losing the time, we are losing the, the most precious what we have is Ukrainian people, this young Ukrainian new generation who is now standing on the front line. But also, if we look on the global impact of this war, all of us who are like uh, looking on the economic outlook and the turbulence that we have on the global economy, each of this report putting Russian war against Ukraine as the main course of, uh, of the economic decline, of the inflation, of the food insecurity, of the energy prices in Europe. So it's for the sake of all of us to stop this war and also refocus on the economic stability, on the dealing with the climate change. But what Russia is doing is not only uh, trying to uh, hit Ukraine and trying to, to kill us as a country and a nation, but also spreading uh, all these turbulences on uh, around the global world. Okay, Ambassador, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.